of Asharatha's life and not having a child, not having a son, Dasharatha performed what is called Putra Kameshti Yoga and he got this sweet rice which he distributed among his three queens and four sons were born after 12 months of gestation. Ramachandra was born in the Chaitra Masa, which is this current month. It happened as of yesterday, the month was over. On the Navami, the ninth day, at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, under the star or constellation on the horizon called Punarvasu. The next morning, Bharata was born. And a little later in the day, the twins Lakshmana and Shatrughna were born. And these four princes grew up with such delight in Dasharatha's palace that Dasharatha could not focus on managing his kingdom. He is constantly looking for Ramachandra. It is said that when he was doing his uh, duties in the court, when one situation was over and the next item was to be discussed, he would say, Rama, come here. He wanted to see Ramachandra walk towards him. And Rama, being very obedient, would come and he say, Yes, Father. No, no, I just called you. Now you can go. And when Ramachandra would turn and go, he would be gazing at Ramachandra. The whole day was, Rama, come, please go, come and go, that's all. Because his eyes were never satisfied how much ever he drank the beauty of Ramachandra. So for 12 years, uh, they were growing up like wonderful princes. And one day Dasharatha, sitting on his throne, thought, my son is 12 years old. It's time for his marriage. This was not 2021. It was um, some million years, millions of years into Treta Yuga. According to that calendar, they got married early. And so he wondered, is Ramachandra ready for marriage? What should we do to get him married? And as he was thinking that, there was a knock on the palace gate. The great sage Vishwamitra had arrived in Ayodhya for some very special purpose. So the guard came in running and said, Vishwamitra is here. The king with all of his ministers ran to the door because if they knew Vishwamitra's history and a great sage has come. That is what hospitality is. You run out to receive your guests. Vishwamitra was brought in. He was seated nicely, his feet, was wa feet were washed, he was worshipped and Dasaratha said, My dear sage, you have come here, whatever is your desire that you have come for, I will fulfill it. What is it that you want? And Vishwamitra said, I am performing a fire yagya out in the forest called Siddhashram and every time we light the sacred fire, there are these rakshasas, demons, who throw stool, urine, pus, blood, make terrible noises, and they are eating away the brahmanas. I want to f you to help me fight them, but I want your son Rama to come with me to do that. When Dasharatha heard this, he had a heart attack. And he said this verse. Unasho dasha varsho me Ramo rajiva lo chanaha Na yutta yoga tamasya Pashyami saharaksha sahihi Unasho dasha varsho me Ramo rajiva lo chanaha Na yutta yoga tamasya Pashyami Saharaksha Sayihi Una Shoda Sho Varshaha My Ramachandra is only 12 years old, not even 16. He cannot fight. He cannot fight Rakshasas. And then he says, Ramachandra is called Rajiva Lochana. Eyes like red lotus petal. 
the hint he is giving vishwamitra is we know a lotus opens at sunrise and closes at sunset my little boy ramachandra goes to bed when the sun sets the rakshasas become fully powerful only after sunset and his age no yogya he is not qualified to fight the rakshasas he is only a little boy i cannot let him go if you want i will come i will bring my entire army and vishwamitra said no i only want your ramachandra and i have a reason for it and this is the reason he gives aham vedmi mahatmanam ramam satya parakramam vasishto api mahateja ye chemi tapasi stita aham vedmi mahatmanam ramam satya parakramam vasishto api mahateja ye chemi tapasi stita aham vedmi i know so with that he implies to dasharatha you don't know so one may wonder dasharatha is thinking this boy is in my house for 12 years you have just come to my gate you say i know your son you don't know and he says aham vedmi i know your son ramachandra is mahatmanam is a very very great person so the secret is this phrase aham vedmi mahatmanam is a verse from the purusha sukta in the rig veda veda aham etam purusham mahantam aditya varnam tamasa parastat tamevam vidwan namrta eva bhavati nanya pantha vidyate anaya that the supreme lord vishnu is mahatmanah and he is the goal for all living beings na anyat parayana there is no other goal for any living being other than lord vishnu so instead of quoting the vedic mantra he is telling dasharatha aham vedmi and therefore you don't know and not only me he is saying vasishto api this vasishta who's in your palace he also knows the same thing ye cha ime tapasi stita then all the sages who are in your palace they also know that ramachandra is the supreme lord so don't be a miser and keep him at home send him with me so after a lot of back and forth dasharath maharaj agrees for ramachandra and lakshmana to follow vishwamitra out into the forest this is the first time they're going to live in a forest they've been used to royal pleasures ramachandra never set foot down on the floor in one sense his soles of his feet were so delicate there is a verse in the vedas that even when lakshmi devi touches the soles of vishnu the soles become red in color because they are very delicate that ramachandra is now walking behind vishwamitra and valmiki says this is how they were walking adyarda yojanam gatva saravya dakshine tate rameti madhuran vanim vishwamitro abhyabhasata adyardayo janam gatva saraiva dakshine tate rameti madhuran vanim vishwamitro abhyabhasata ardha yojanam gatva they walked for 4 miles vishwamitra was walking in front ram and lakshmana walking behind they had not spoken to each other imagine if you are just sent away at 12 years old age with somebody and they don't speak to you for 4 miles they don't ask you are you okay are you not okay are your feet okay can you walk can you not walk no question no discussion 
they went to the southern shore of the sarayu river saraye dakshine tate at that time after 4 miles vishwamitra spoke to ramachandra he said rama and he said it in a madhuram vani in a very sweet way he called ramachandra rama and he said yes master this was the first test for ramachandra and lakshmana that when they are serving their guru they cannot demand anything when the guru speaks only then they reply otherwise shut up and although they were princes they were not treated royally by vishwamitra they were walking into the forest so vishwamitra tested are they good disciples and finally when he accom yes he said rama and from here on vishwamitra is going to prepare ramachandra to become qualified to marry sita devi because up until this point although vishwamitra said that i am taking ramachandra to the forest to kill the demons there is actually a hidden agenda the agenda is to take ramachandra to mithila but he doesn't say that to dasharatha just yet he just told him six days i will return your son back but vishwamitra is considering if he has to marry sita devi in mithila they will ask as they say in hindi ladka karta kya hai what does the boy do and if vishwamitra says he is only a prince so they will ask him has he accomplished anything no no he is just a very good boy then they may say oh, good boy but uh, we don't know if he is qualified for sita devi in the vedas there is a book called uh, shubhashita bhandagara that has very nice quotes and one of the quotes
says, Men, Narashardula, you come with me because there, Adbhutam Dhanur Ratnam, there is a fantastic bow. Now, Ramachandra likes to shoot arrows from his bow. So he piqued his interest. He said, There is an excellent bow. And Drashtum Arhasi, you should really see that bow. You will like it. And then he describes the qualities of the bow. Go ahead. Nashya Deva Nagandarva Nasura Nacharakshasa Kartumaro Panam. Shakta Nakatanchana Manusha. It's a special bow that is very, very heavy and it cannot be lifted by anybody. Na Asya Deva, even the demigods cannot lift it. Na Gandharva na Asura, the Gandharvas, the Asuras, na Rakshasas. Anybody in the universe who are very, very strong and stronger than human beings have not been able to lift this bow. Then what to speak of human beings? Kathanchana Manusha, they cannot lift this bow. But I want you to see it. So let's go. So they walk and they enter Mithila. As soon as they enter Mithila, the news has spread that Vishwamitra is here. And so King Janaka runs out of his palace to receive Vishwamitra. As soon as he offers obeisances to Vishwamitra, he cannot help himself that there are two boys that are standing behind. And they are so handsome that Janaka is ah, stunned by their beauty. And he asks Vishwamitra, who are they? And this is how he asks Yimau Kumarau Badram Te Deva Tulya Parakramau Gajasim Hagati Virao Shardula Vrishabopamau Padma Patra Visalakshau Kadgatu Nidhanur Dharau Ashwina Oh great Muni Vishwamitra Imau, Komaro, these two boys, tell me, who are they? Deva Tulya Parakrama, they have effulgence and prowess like the demigods. And as they are walking, Gaja, Simha, Gati, Viro, they are so powerful. They are walking like elephant and a lion. When an elephant walks, Anything and everything in its way is crushed because it is powerful. Simha, a lion when it walks, it walks with its neck raised up and looks around because it is knows is the king of the forest. Shardula, they are like tigers. Tigers because they are very, very keenly observing as they are walking. They are not walking blindly somewhere. Vrishabhopamau, like a bull or like two bulls. A bull is the, the leader of the herd. And when the bull stands, all the cows feel sheltered and protected. Padma Patra Vishal Akshav. Their eyes are big and very well formed like lotus petals. And in their hands, they are holding swords. Khadga, Tuni. They have quiver full of arrows. 
and dhanurdharav they are holding bows so they are looking so majestic ashwinau rupena they look like the two ashwini kumaras who are the most handsome twins in the entire universe samupasthita yavanau these two young boys they are here with you why have they come why are their feet touching this ground kathanchit yadrich eva gam padav gam is the earth how are their wonderful beautiful feet touching my holy land of mithila are they demigods are they coming from the heavenly planets devaloka or are they the demigods amaro katham why are they here what is the purpose that they have come here please tell me muni kasya va mune tell me why are they here i am eager to know then vishwamitra tells oh janaka we are here because i want these boys to see the great bow that you have so before you show us the bow tell us tell these boys about the bow a little bit you know if you go to someone's home and they've bought something from a place and they're keeping in their house naturally as soon as you go they will show you you know this i bought when i went there and they talk about half an hour about it so like that janaka maharaj was eager to speak about the bow and so janaka said yes yes i will show it to you but first let me tell you about it he said my ancestor his name is nimi who we hear in the shrimad bhagavatam the nine uh, uh, navayogendras came to speak to maharaj nimi so the sixth king after nimi his name was devarata and once the demigods had performed a yagya and they did not invite lord shiva and lord shiva got very upset because you cannot perform a yagya without lord shiva so lord shiva who became very upset with the demigods and the demigods who could not manage lord shiva's anger fell at his feet and sought his forgiveness so lord shiva said all right forgiven and my token of forgiveness is this bow that i have is yours it's called the shiva chapa or pashupata chapa which is the bow of lord shiva now there are only two such bows in the universe and these bows were crafted by vishwakarma not vishwakarma das he crafts the best prasadam this vishwakarma is the architect of the universe he made two bows one for lord shiva one for lord vishnu so that bow lord shiva gave to the demigods devarata went to fight on behalf of the demigods in some other situation they were so pleased with him that they gifted the bow to him so generation after generation generation after generation that bow has been coming in our family and we worship it very very carefully it is a very very prized possession however this bow because it is lord shiva's bow it is not some ordinary bow and while he is speaking about the bow suddenly he talks about sita devi so this is what he says bhutala dutita satu vyavartata mahatmaja शुल्के मे कन्या स्थापिते यमनो निज माय डॉटर इज कॉल्ड अयो निज वन हु इज बॉर्न विदाउट अ बायोलॉजिकल मदर और फादर शी वाज फाउंड इन द ग्राउंड एंड आई हैव डिसाइडेड that i will give my daughter in marriage to somebody who can show to me that they are real heroes not heroes hero <laughs> he is a hero and so the dowry that i am looking for is a dowry of 
heroism, virya shulka. Shulka means payment. Only a hero or when someone demonstrates their heroism, I will accept that as dowry. And he says, so many kings have come in the past. And they have tried to show their heroism by trying to lift this bow and string it. But not only are they not able to lift it, they can't even move it. And they got so upset with me that some of them, because they got frustrated, they tried to attack my kingdom. But somehow they have been unsuccessful in even moving that bow a little bit. And I've had to guard this bow with my large army. So, I have a challenge. Yadhyasya Danusho Ramaha Kuryadaro Panam Mune Sutamayoni Jam Sitam Dadyam Dasharate Raham Yadi, if, remember, a father-in-law always has to put conditions. If, then only I'll give my daughter. So here's the condition. If, Yadi, Asya Dhanusha, this bow that he's going to show them, Rama Kuryad Aropanam, if Ramachandra can lift this bow, Sutam Ayonija, my daughter, Dadyam, I will give. Dasharathe Aham. I will give my daughter to the son of Dasharatha. So the condition is, Rama, can you lift this bow? So Janaka said, bring the bow. Suddenly, in the midst of drum rolls, 5,000 men pushed a cart which had eight wheels. So we have eight wheeler trucks. He had massive, massive. It required 5,000 men to push that bow and bring it in front of Ramachandra. And they're all looking at it. Then, because Ramachandra is a very obedient boy, he's standing behind or right next to Vishwamitra. Lakshmana is also there. Janaka is there. And this bow has arrived. Vishwamitra is to give permission for Ramachandra. So note exactly what he says to Ramachandra. Go ahead. Vishwamitras to dharmatma Shrutva janaka bashitam Vatsarama danuho Pashyayeti ragavama bravit He heard the words of Janaka and the great Vishwamitra said, O oh, my dear child, Vatsa, Rama, this, the descendant of Raghu, Raghavam, look at the bow, Pashya. He said, look at the bow. This is what Ramachandra did. Now the scholars describe why Vishwamitra called Ramachandra Vatsa. Vatsa means young child, my dear. Although the normal rule is the youngest in the assembly is called Vatsa. Who's the youngest here now? Lakshmana. So as soon as he said Vatsa, he thought Lakshmana will get up. Sita has to be married. So before Lakshmana can get up, he said Rama. Pashya Dhanur, you should see the bow. So first he called him Vatsa because Rama is just a small boy who has never lifted a bow like this. And what to speak that the Devas, Gandharvas have not been able to lift. He's also warning Ramachandra by calling him Vatsa. We all know you're the Supreme Lord. This is not the time to show everybody that you are God. You just behave like a child. What's up? The Supreme Lord has a mark on his chest called Shri Vatsa. So he's telling him, Vatsa, 
your shri is about to come <laughs> then he called him vatsa rama actually in a composition called hanumat natakam which is a ramayana composed by hanuman there is a little dialogue that happens in this situation janaka when he brings the bow there he tells everyone nirviryam urvitale is there no hero on this earth who can pick this bow lakshmana becomes very upset because when ramachandra is there how can you say there is no hero he said how dare you and lakshmana is about to stand up to say why you need ramachandra i can break this bro so uh, vishwamitra is saying vatsa rama you not him don't get up lakshmana actually when the bow came here and janaka said i want virya shulka i want heroism vishwamitra was about to say veera rama you should get up but he has such love for his little boy ramachandra he says vatsa rama dhanurpashya because it's called vatsalya he has a very fatherly love towards ramachandra and he's calling him vatsa child because he knows others cannot lift this bow but for ramachandra it will be child's play so vatsa rama pick up this bow then he says vatsa rama dhanur although you are behaving and looking like a small boy that bow is actually for you only you can lift it then he said to rama dhanur pashya look at the bow he didn't say pick it he didn't say touch it he said look at it from brahma samhita we know that the supreme lord can do anything with any of his senses angani yasya sakalendriya vritti manti pashyanti panti kalayanti chiram jaganti anand chinmaya sadujjwala vigrahasya govindam adi purusham tamaham vaja ramachandra can lift the bow by just looking at it now he didn't say lift the bow he said look at the bow because if suddenly he said pick it up and what if ramachandra could not pick it up as a father or a fatherly guru he has a little doubt in his child not in his abilities just the fatherly love just as dasaratha said no no my ramachandra cannot go to the forest vishwamitra he is only a little boy so he saying vashara just look at the bow don't touch it or pick it up you might hurt yourself so finally ramachandra he went towards the bow looked at it made eye contact with vishwamitra and vishwamitra through his eyes told him yes time to pick it up and this is what happened pashyatam rupa sahasranam bahunam ragunandanah aropayasya dharmatma salilam iva taddanu aropayitva dharmatma purayama satadanu tadbhanja danur madhye narasreshto mahayasah tasya shabdo mahanasit nirghata samaneeshwanah bhumi kampascha sumahan this wonderful ramachandra uh looked at the bow because it is lord shiva's bow offered it respect picked it up <gasps> everyone was shocked little boy he picked it up as if it is some very simple light weight thing the word used in the first verse is leelam eva like he was playing with the bow when lord krishna picked up the great mountain govardhan in the bhagavatam it says like a child picks up a mushroom ramachandra picked up this bow 
as if it had no weight in it. And then, not only did he pick it up, he bent, pulled the string, tied the string to the bow, and pulled the string, it broke. And it broke with such a huge sound as if lightning that it strikes mountain tops and the mountain tops crack. The entire earth shook because it is Lord Shiva's bow. Everybody was ah, and everybody in the palace fell unconscious except Vasishta, Ramachandra, Lakshmana, Vishwamitra, Janaka. So this breaking of the bow is, is a very, very special, uh, we're going to skip that one, the, the, we're going to skip this, Nipetishta Narad Sarveto. Okay. So when the bow broke, all the great Acharyas have a time of ecstasy, a field day in describing what all happened when the bow broke. So first of all, it is Lord Shiva's bow. If someone breaks something that belongs to you, how would you feel? Not happy. But Lord Shiva was in complete ecstasy. So there is a work called Udara Raghavam. In that the poet says, when this bow broke, and the entire earth shook, Lord Shiva became very happy. And he gives the secret why Shiva became happy. Because on Mount Kailash, Parvati Devi was sitting on Lord Shiva's lap. And when the whole earth shook, Kailash also shook, and Parvati got scared, and she embraced Shiva very tightly. And Shiva became very pleased. Good job, Ramachandra. Very nice. <laughs> In a work called Hanumat Natakam, Hanuman says that when the bow was broken by Ramachandra, three girls became eligible for marriage. The first girl, her name is Shri, that is Sita Devi. Obviously, he not only lifted the bow, he broke it. So, Shri became eligible to marry Ramachandra. There is another, this is a poetic way of saying something. Another girl called Hri, H-R-I. Hri in Sanskrit means shyness or shame. Because Ramachandra broke the bow, all the other kings, the devatas, the rakshasas, gandharvas, their heads went down in shame. Meaning, shame went to embrace them and became married to them. It's a good way of saying they were ashamed. And a third girl who was eligible, her name was Kirti. Kirti means fame. This girl Kirti went round the universe to look for a suitable boy for herself. Because Kirti ultimately belonged to Ramachandra only. No one else can have that kind of glory that Ramachandra has. So three girls became eligible for marriage. One got married. The second one got married to many others. The third one was not. Now there is a significance on why there is a bow and why Ramachandra broke the bow. In the Mundaka Upanishad and Mandukya Upanishad, which are Vedic texts, it says, Pranavo hi dhanuhu, Sharo hi atmaha, Brahma ta lakshatam laksham uchate apramateva vethavyam. That the word Om is signified as a bow because Om has three parts a, u, and ma. The bow also has three parts the lower part, the upper part, and the string that connects it. And one is supposed to pick up this bow called Om, place an arrow on it, which is the Atma, and take aim and shoot it towards Brahma, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That means the one should recite the holy name 
the way as we do we chant the hari krishna mantra or the om and life's purpose is to reach the supreme personality of godhead so ramachandra by lifting the bow and breaking it has now announced to the whole world i have arrived on planet earth all those sages who been meditating for thousands and thousands of years i have arrived you will see me soon now this bow has three parts it is said that the upper part represents lord vishnu the lower part represents the atma and the string represents sita devi or radha rani or lakshmi devi his internal potency and by pulling on the string that is pulled up to the ear it means by the process of bhakti one carries this bow close to the ear so you can hear from one's spiritual master and from that realization when the bow breaks does the lower part go to the upper part or the upper part come down the upper part has to come meet the lower part because of the string so it is shrimati radharani or sita devi who makes it possible for ramachandra to meet us this is the breaking of the bow so it's a very very significant event philosophically and this is why ramachandra breaks the bow another poet as part of humor says ramachandra broke the bow because he was annoyed what kind of competition is this you asked me to string the bow but i broke it so that no one else can come and string it again and say i want to marry sita from now on janaka no such competition end it so then there is a great sage who also says his name is kalidasa he wrote the great book called raghuvamsha he says when ramachandra broke the bow and the earth shook it was a warning to parashuram who had taken a vow that i will finish all the kshatriyas the princes on planet earth and he did for 21 generations he had finished them but this was a warning ramachandra is there that is not a kshatriya that you can do anything to then tulsidas in his ramacharit manas tells us that ramachandra when he was standing with the bow in his hand and he broke it his form is called virya roopa why because the janaka has said virya shulkena the dowry i want is heroism ramachandra is the embodiment of heroism so then as soon as this happens the news goes out oh ramachandra you are eligible to marry my daughter sita rama says wo 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 hold on i came here to look at the bow my guru said look at it i took care of it but marriage ah, my father has to give me permission so the news was sent to maharaj dasharath who became so thrilled because remember 6 days ago i was thinking should i put him on dashadi.com or matrimonials vaishnava matrimonial not required vishwamitra came and took care of it and so they all rushed to mithila and on that sacred day ramachandra who was so beautifully decked up that people could not take their eyes of ramachandra sita devi was brought to stand in front of him these are the verses this is the time of their marriage now tata sitam samaniya sarva aabharana bhushitam samakshamagne samstapya raghava abhimukhe tadha abravijjana ko raja कौसल्यानंदवर्धनम् 
She was decked with jewelry from top to bottom. Dazzling diamonds. All sorts of beautiful jewelry on her. There was so much effulgence, people couldn't notice that she was there. Samaksham Agne Samsthapya. He brought her to where the sacrificial fire was because you cannot conduct a marriage without Agni Sakshi. Raghava Abhimukhe. Abhimukhe means face to face. She was made to stand face to face with Ramachandra. At that time, Abravit Raja, the King Janaka, spoke this to Ramachandra, who is called here Kausalya Ananda Vardhana, one who makes Kausalya's happiness grow in multifold. What did Janaka say? Yam Sita Mama Sutta Sahadarma Charitava Praticha Chainam Badram Te Panin Grinishwa Paninam Pati Brata Mahabhagam Chayeva Nugata Sada Ityuktwa Prakshi Padraja Mantra Putam Jalam Tadha he said, this is my, I'll read the translation and I'll explain word by word because it's really fantastic. This is my daughter Sita, who will be your partner in performing her rightful duty. Accept her. Take her hand in your own. By being a devoted wife, this highly fortunate Sita would always follow you like a shadow. Having said this, he sprinkled the sacred water with mantras on the two hands that were holding each other. So here, there's a lot of meaning hidden where he says, Iyam Sita, this Sita. So the question is, everybody knows who Sita is. Everybody knows she is Sita. Why is he saying, Iyam Sita, this Sita? Because he's saying to Ramachandra, there is so much effulgence around Sita, you may not know where she is standing, she is standing right here. Another meaning is, this Sita means, this Sita is not ordinary, she is very, very special. You were born from mom and dad. Dasaratha and Kausalya. She was born in a very special way from the earth. Iyam Sita. This special Sita. Then Ramachandra, because he's a young boy, may be looking here and there. Are there other pretty girls in the assembly? So Janaka is saying, Iyam Sita. This one. Because there can be many Sitas. Right? There are so many people with names that are common. So he's saying, no, not that one, not that one, not the Iyam Sita, this one. Then he says, uh, Ramachandra, because he has very chanchala, uh, very uh, mischievous eyes, he's always looking for his consort. So Janaka is telling him, finally, she's here, Iyam Sita, she's here with you. Then he says, Iyam Sita, Mama Suta, my daughter. So Ramachandra may say, okay, she's very beautiful, no doubt. Extremely effulgent, stunning beauty. But beauty is not everything. It also depends what family she's from. Mama Suta, she is my daughter. I am King Janaka. I come in a very, very great lineage. I am one of the Mahajanas. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, there are 12 Mahajanas of which Janaka is one of them. So you need not worry whether her family background is good or not. Excellent family background. And then he says, Iyam Sita Mama Suta. That this girl has come from Mother Earth. Although I call her my daughter, she is actually from Mother Earth. And Earth has two qualities. Tolerance and forbearance. These are very, very essential within a couple. 
So he's telling Ramachandra, my daughter is very tolerant and very forbearing, won't easily complain for anything. So you're very fortunate, Ramachandra. She has these qualities of earth. In fact, she has more than you. You may sometimes get angry. She will never get angry. Ramachandra's eyes are described as Rajiva Lochana, red lotus petals. Reddish means sometimes angry at demons. Sita, her eyes are called Asita, Asitekshana, not Sita. Asita means black. Her eyes are always black with white on the sides. She never gets angry. So in that sense, she's better than you. And then he said, Iyam Sita Mama Sutta. So in Sanskrit, where Sita, Mama, Iyam Sita Mama, sometimes can be read as Iyam Sita Amama Sutta, not my daughter. Because when we are doing fire yagya, and we are offering ghee into the fire. We say, idam vishnave namaha. This is for Lord Vishnu. Idam namama. This is not for me. So this daughter, this, this girl Sita is for you. I may just be a caretaker. But I don't own her. I don't possess her. Amama Sutta. Second is, Janaka is a very, very advanced devotee. He has no sense of attachment, worldly attachment. So there is no sense of mama or aham. These are the two problems every living being has. Ahankara and mamakara. Ahankara means I am thinking I am this body. And mamakara means everything that is in my grasp is mine. So he is saying amama sutta, not mine. We cannot own the Lord. Then he says, Saha dharma charitava. When it comes to dharma, she is as good as you are. And she will always be there to follow dharma with you. She will never cross the line of dharma. So she is not just for enjoyment. Because she is there for you to perform your dharma. Actually in Sanskrit, a wife is called dharma patni. Right? She is called dharma patni. She is not called Kama Patni, Artha Patni or Moksha Patni. She's called Dharma Patni. Because only because of her can a man or a couple perform Vedic Yajna for the benefit of the family. So he says, as Dharma you may be forgiving. She's more forgiving than you. You are a very kind person. She's more, she's kinder than you. You may be strict because Dharma means you have to be strict. She's stricter than you. Sahadharma Charitava. She is not a fair weather friend. That when the going is great, she is there with you. And when challenges come, she is going to leave you. Not like that. Sahadharma Chari. If you accept her, only then you can fulfill your dharma for which you have appeared on this planet. So indirectly, you can only help Sugriva, Vibhishana and Ravana only when Sita is there. Otherwise, project unsuccessful. Saha dharma chari tava. When you have to follow dharma, she will not hesitate to correct you if there seems to be any discrepancy. She will tell you, this is not okay, Ramachandra. And she will bring glory, not only to my family, but your family also. This is the glory of having a daughter. She brings glory to two families. A son brings glory to one family, his own family. The daughter brings glory to her family where she was born and the family to, into which she marries. And he says, please accept her. He didn't say take her. Accept her means hidden meaning. She's already yours. She is your consort. Now is the time for you to accept her. Um, so he's saying, uh, in, in a Vedic wedding, there is this ceremony called Sampradhanam. I think in uh, Christian weddings, we call it the giving away of the bride. Uh, the father walks the bride 
uh, down the aisle and uh, gives her uh, to the husband. So in this case, we don't hear the word dhanam anywhere. Because he cannot give Sita to Ramachandra. She already belongs to him. So he's just saying, please accept her. And then he says, Panim Grinhisha, please hold her hand. The reason being, many, many fellows came before this to try to lift the bow and they were not able to. So only you are eligible to hold her hand. You are very, very strong. You just broke the bow. She is hesitating to extend her hand. Please take her hand and hold it. Now, if she extends her hand first, her hand will be on top and yours will be on bottom. That's not okay. She is your consort. So your hand should be on the top. So you extend your hand and take her hand. And finally, Janaka Maharaja is so captivated by the beauty of Ramachandra and Sita together that he wants to see them holding hands. He says, Panim Granisha, hold her hand quickly. I want to drink that beauty of both of you through my eyes. And then he says, Pativrata. Now, how does a father know that his daughter is chaste even without marrying? So the idea is, Janaka Maharaj, because he is a great soul, he is speaking prophetic words. That Ramachandra, Sita, is the most chaste wife for you. And then he said, Chayeva Anugata Sada. She will always be with you like a shadow is with you. You don't have to do anything for the shadow. It's there. Now a shadow... Sometimes is behind us, is next to us, and in front of us, depending upon where the source of the light is. So he's telling Ramachandra that when you are following towards Dharma, she will always be right behind you. She got your back. When you need good advice, she's always next to you as a shadow, whispering. Good advice to you. And if there is any difficulty that comes, she will be ahead of you. She will take on that difficulty first and not let it come to you. Because she is the best friend you can ever have. And with that, the marriage was performed. And all the demigods, sages from the entire universe had collected in the sky looking at this wedding ceremony because Janaka had sprinkled the sacred waters on the two palms of Ramachandra and Sita Devi. And this is what all the demigods from the sky said and did. Sadhu Sadviti Devanan Trishinam Badatam Tadara Deva Dundu Bhir Nidhoshaha Pushpa Varsho Mahana Bhut Sadhu Sadviti Devanan Trishinam Badatam Tadara Deva Dundu Bhir Nidhoshaha Pushpa Varsho Mahana Bhut Deva Dundur Bhir Ghoshaha. They started beating kettle drums in celebration and showered great rains of flower petals. And while they were doing it, they were loudly shouting, which I'm going to ask you to do. Sadhu! 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 Come on, with some zest in it, Ramachandra and Sita are married. So we'll try one more time. Loudly with enthusiasm. Sadhu! Sadhu! And that is how, finally, Ramachandra was married to Sita Devi. Lakshmana was married to Sita Devi's sister, Urmila. Janaka's brother had two daughters. Bharata was married to Mandavi. And Shatrughna was married to Shrutakirti. And this is how all four weddings were conducted at the same time. And these four couples slowly started coming back towards Ayodhya. So with that we end and we end with 
a few verses from uh, a song written by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's associate by the name Murari Gupta. He wrote a song called Sri Ramashtakam because he was a great devotee of Lord Ram. We're not going to sing all the eight. Only three of them are there. And after that, we'll end and everyone can have wedding dinner. Rajat Kirita Marni Diti Diti Pitam Sam Udyat Prahaspati Kavi Pratime Vahantam Dve Kundalenkarahi Tendu Samana Vakram Ramam Jagatraya Gurum Satatam Bhajami Uttana Hastatala Samsta Sahasra Patram Pancha Chadrika Shatam Pravarangguli Bhihi Kurvatya Sita Kanaka Duty Yes Yes Sita Pashwestitam Raghuvaram Satatam Bhajami Bhangtwa Pinakam Akarot Janakatma Jaya Vaivahi Kotsava Vidim Pati Bharga Vendram Jeetwa Pitur Mudham Uvahaka Kutsa Varyam Ramam Jagatraya Gurum Satatam Bhajami Ramam Jagatraya Gurum Satatam Bhajami Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Shri Shri Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman Ji Ki Jai Gaur Bhakta Vrind Ki Jai Thank you very much Hare Krishna Thank you so much. We will please chant three times Hari Bol.